watching just the news i'm amita balachandra let's get straight to our top story we're starting off with covid numbers india has reported over 2.51 lakh new covid cases and 627 deaths in the last 24 hours the active cases are now over 21 lakh and the daily positivity rate is at 15.8% so there is a slight drop from 19.5%. Uh, in the meantime, Union Health Minister has said that India has administered over 1 crore pop, uh, precaution dose of COVID vaccine among the eligible beneficiaries uh, within 19 days. I'll also give you a brief picture of what different states are reporting at this point in time. Maharashtra has reported 24,948 new COVID cases. Mumbai has consistently been reporting a little over 1,000 cases. So in the last 24 hours, uh, it's reported 1,312 cases. Uh, Delhi has reported 4,044 new COVID cases. Kolkata has reported 481 cases. Bengaluru has reported. 15199 cases yesterday it was a little over 17000 cases so there's a marginal decrease in the number of cases in bengaluru as well in the meantime kerala has continued to clock over 50000 daily covid cases in the last 24 hours it's at 54537 new covid cases and the test positivity rate is at 47.05% the state also recorded 13 related deaths uh the health minister of the state veena george said that quarantine is not mandatory for all those who come in contact with covid-19 patients only caregivers who assist the patients need to isolate themselves she said however there's a bit of a silver lining here the health minister said that uh of the 3.33 lakh active cases in the state only 3.6% of them uh, are requiring hospitalization so that's good news the daily posi uh, test positivity rate like i mentioned is at 47% In the meantime, uh, the health minister has also said that at least 94% of samples in Kerala have tested positive for the Omicron variant of COVID. Uh, according to A N I, she went on to say, and I quote: "Continuous sequencing of COVID positive samples is being done. It is now clear that the third wave in Kerala is the Omicron wave." End quote. Also in the news the drugs controller general of India on Friday permitted Bharat Biotech to conduct trials for its intranasal booster dose against covid now the trials will be conducted at nine different sites and uh, this is what the letter that the DGCI issued said and I quote the phase 3 clinical trial should be conducted as per protocol multi center study to compare immunogenicity and safety of the bb uh, bbv 154 with covaxin end quote now uh, an intranasal vaccine as a booster dose would be easier to administer in mass vaccination campaigns and has the potential to prevent transmission also uh, while responding to pils alleging improper pandemic management the maharashtra government interestingly has told the bombay high court that covid in the state is now fully under control and that the government is geared to meet any eventual in eventuality arising out of further spread of omicron variant now the court referred to the opinions of experts and said that while the omicron variant was less lethal than other variants uh, including delta it spreads fast which requires it to be controlled by the authorities and also said that it would take stock of the situation in the state during the next hearing now at a time when states are lifting covid restrictions and we've seen this uh, which in in the case of delhi especially which has done so the center has asked states to exercise caution while re lifting restrictions as the number of infections still remain high the uh, ministry of home affairs on thursday passed an order under the disaster management act extending its earlier order of december 27th for covid containment till the 28th of february now this comes after delhi has lifted most of its covid restrictions and maharashtra has resumed offline classes as well the mha has told states to observe all of the precautions and and i quote not to let guard down end quote
Meanwhile, Sweden's health agency on Thursday said that it would not recommend COVID vaccination for all kids aged 5 to 11 as the benefits did not outweigh the risks. And this is a Reuters report where the health agency uh, authorities have said, and I quote, with the knowledge we have today with a low risk for a serious disease for kids, we don't see any clear benefit with vaccinating them, end quote. Moving on to other news coming in from across the country. Trigger warning for people who are watching right now. The next piece of news is very, very distressing. So if you want to stop watching at this point, you may uh, please do so. In a horrifying incident that's come in from Delhi, a 20-year-old woman was abducted and gang raped by her neighbors and paraded on the streets in Delhi's Shadra district. Now, in a statement to the police, the woman alleged that a group of men locked her inside the house and raped her while the women instigated the men and later trashed her with sticks. They also blackened her face and paraded her with a garland of slippers around her neck. Now, in one of the videos of the incident that's gone viral, a group of women can be seen trashing the victim while parading her. Neighbours and locals are seen clapping with no one coming forward to intervene. Now, the Indian Express has quoted an officer, police officer, who has said, and I quote, we have uh, been told that one of the family members of the accused, aged around 15 or 16 years, was stalking the woman and also proposed to her, which she rejected. On November 12th last year, he left home and allegedly committed suicide by jumping in front of a train. The family blamed the woman and wanted revenge. End quote. Now, post this, uh, Chief Minister Arvind K. Jival, East Delhi MP Gautam Gambhir and Delhi Commission uh, for Women Chief Swati Malival assured all help to the victim's family. The police have said that they have arrested seven women and apprehended two boys from the accused family. Two other accused are currently on the run. The police have said a case under sections of illegal confinement, abduction, gang rape and physical and sexual assault has been registered against 11 people. Moving on now, a Supreme Court on Friday cancelled the one-year suspension of 12 BJP MLAs from the Maharashtra Legislative Assembly and termed the suspension, and I quote, unconstitutional, illegal and arbitrary, end quote. Now, the 12 MLAs uh, had been suspended in July 2021 after the state government accused them of misbehaving with the presiding officer Bhaskar Jadav in the Speaker's chamber. Now, former Maharashtra Chief Minister Devendra Fadnavis, uh, immediately after this, uh, said, and I quote, We welcome and thank the Honorable SE for the historic decision of quashing of suspension of our 12 BJP Maharashtra MLAs who are fighting for the cause of OBCs in Maharashtra Legislative Assembly during the monsoon session, end quote. Also in the news, India today has signed a deal worth $374.9 million for the sale of the BrahMos missile system for use for the Philippines Navy. Now, in a statement, the Defense Ministry said, and I quote, the BAPL signed a contract with the Department of National Defense of the Republic of Philippines on the 28th of January 2022 for supply of shore-based anti-ship missile system to Philippines, end quote. Now, the development will be a major shot in the arm for India's efforts to become uh, an exporter of defense hardware and could pave the way for more Southeast Asian nations to acquire the missile. Moving on to environment news. Now, like we promised you yesterday, we bring you one piece of information that you must know. Today, we talk to you about a report by the consultancy firm McKinsey, uh, which has said that if India were to achieve net zero emissions by 2050, it would have to spend an average of $600 billion annually for the next 30 years, which means as much as 11% of its GDP. Now, if you remember, uh, in November last year at the Glasgow Climate Summit, Prime Minister Modi had said that India will be net zero by 2070. Net zero means completely neutralizing the greenhouse gases produced by human activity by reducing and absorbing emissions. On to business news right now. According to ANI, the union budget 2022-23 will be presented by Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman on the 1st of February 2022 in a paperless form. Now, the halwa ceremony, which uh, will also not be held due to the pandemic. Instead, the core staff will be provided with sweets 
at their workplace. Now, to maintain the secrecy of the budget, there is a lock-in of the officials involved in making the budget. In the meantime, just days ahead of the union budget, Dr. V. Anand Nageswaran has been appointed as the new chief economic advisor. He succeeds K. V. Subramanian, uh, who demoted office of CEA in December 2021 after the completion of his three-year term. On to an international news right now, we bring you updates on the Ukraine crisis. India, interestingly, has issued its first statement amid the ongoing tensions between Russia and Ukraine. The Ministry of External Affairs official spokesperson has said, and I quote, We have been closely following the developments relating to Ukraine, including the ongoing high-level discussions between Russia and the US. Our embassy in Kyiv is also monitoring local developments. We call for a peaceful resolution of the situation through sustained diplomatic efforts for long-term peace and stability in the region and beyond. End quote. In the meantime, amid all of these tensions, there was something else that added to the tensions. According to a report by New York Times, a member of the Ukrainian National Guard opened fire at an aerospace and rocket factory on Thursday, killing at least five people. The gunman fled the scene, leading to a manhunt that lasted for hours before a suspect was taken into custody. Now, according to the police, four of those killed were soldiers and the fifth was an employee of the factory. Five other people were wounded. Moving on, according to a report by the International Labour Organization, Myanmar lost about 1.6 million jobs in 2021 amid the COVID pandemic and a military takeover in February last year. Now, women are worst affected as work in factories, tourism and construction dwindled because of the pandemic. Moving on to sports news right now, former world number one Rafael Nadal has defeated world number seven Matteo Berrettini of uh, Italy in the Australian Open 2022 semi-final to reach his sixth Australian Open final. Now the 35-year-old won the match with a scoreline of 6-3, 6-2, 3-6, 6-3 in two hours and 55 minutes. One piece of good news before we wrap up things here on this bulletin. India's largest electric vehicle charging station was inaugurated at Delhi Jaipur National Highway in Gurugram today. Now, the new charging station, which is developing, uh, de developed by tech piloting company Electrify, has a capacity of 100 charging points for four wheelers. Previously, the largest EV charging station of India was situated in Navi, Mumbai. That brings us to the end of this bulletin. Thank you so much for watching. Good night. Uh -huh.